I am going to try something that I don't do very often is using um, TypeScript with Babel Webpack. There might be reasons you might want to use Babel to do the um, processing of the TypeScript output. I mean, maybe you want to use certain plugins or something, or you think it uh, has some better polyfills or whatever, which is fine. No big. All right, so I've got my um, package.json here. Let me go ahead and make a uh, tsconfig.json. To add a, a source folder. Um, what else do I need here? Oh, we need a webpack config, right? So a uh, webpack config. Yes, I'm gonna go ahead and use the um, ArcGIS core uh, for the sample. That's gonna be my main dependency. But definitely, you want the uh, TypeScript, right? So those are gonna be my dev dependencies. So TypeScript. Uh, we're not gonna use TSLib, so I'll leave that out. Um, I think I don't, I don't think I need it. Maybe we'll see. Uh, no, I think because of the way I'm doing this here, I don't shouldn't need it. So let's do, we need Babel stuff, right? So need a Babel uh, CLI, need the um, Babel core, uh, Babel loader. Wait, give me a second. Don't tell me. I need Webpack. <laughs> the Webpack CLI and Webpack dev server uh so that's basically what you need for when you do normal typescript development right you you have your typescript in there and that's also what you would use if you were just going to install a regular Babel project oh i know what else i need so i need the uh Babel ah, preset in v i think it is yeah in v and so if you want to have Babel uh, parse the TypeScript stuff as well. When it hits a um, in Webpack, when it hits a TypeScript file, you want to run it through the um, uh, Babel preset TypeScript. Boom. All right, that should be fine. Let me look at my package JSON and see here. So make sure it makes sense. So I got the Babel CLI, got Babel Core, preset ENV, uh, TypeScript, Babel, or the preset TypeScript, Babel Loader, TypeScript Webpack, Webpack CLI, and the Webpack Dev Server. Uh, let me load some uh, more Webpack stuff. Let's just get the um, CSS loader, mini CSS extract plugin. That is the one that we use today. Uh, style loader, right? I need to load these styles at runtime. Oh, I need the HTML with my plugin, yeah. I need to make my little HTML file. Now what I need to do, update my TS config, right? Tyler options. And for my compiler options, my target, target is going to be ES, uh, wait, should be my drop down. There we go. ES next, all right? That'll be my target because I'm going to let TypeScript come, uh, spit out ES next code to go with the um, a project and now let Babel do the compiling. So my module resolution is going to be node, uh, Allow JS uh, true. I don't know if I need that. Maybe I don't need that. No, I don't need that. Let's let's, let's go with that. If if I end up needing it, I can use it. Uh, no emit, right? So I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to let TypeScript do the emit of the files anymore. It's basically when you babble with TypeScript, you're basically just using TypeScript to validate your types. It's not really going to do. Um, the uh, transforming of the files anymore. Babel is going to be taking care of that. That's really up to uh, TypeScript. Is really just used for uh, types, right? Uh, I want my strict to be true. Strict true could break some stuff, uh, depending on. Usually, it's with um, code bases that you're updating that are existing code bases. Strict true will break it, but if you start a project with strict true, you're probably better off because it'll catch the errors pretty on for you, uh, early on for you. Um, so. Uh, let's do this isolated modules. This does, um, what the hell does this do again? Uh, something about uh, cross file um, stuff with the emit. I forget exactly what it does. And I also want a ES module interrupt because um, uh, I don't know if I need it, to tell you the truth. Maybe I don't. You know what? I'm going to go without ES module interrupt because the API is all ESM anyway. So I think we are pretty safe there. So that's my compiler options and what files I want to include. I want to include everything that's under the uh, source directory. 
Bam, there we go. And it's erroring right now because uh, I think because there's nothing in my source directory. Um, yeah, I mean, my, my path is empty. There's no files right now. So that'll change in, the, in a bit. Uh, okay, so now we've got our dependencies in here. What does my um, Webpack config look like, right? So, oh, oh, I know I want to install. Because uh, I don't want to bother copying the assets over for the JavaScript API. So I'm going to go install the ArcGIS uh, Webpack plugin. Boom. Let it do its thing. So now I can go my my Webpack config here. I was going to do imports, but no, I'm not. I don't want to set things to module and all that stuff. And just get classical here. So ArcGIS Webpack plugin. There we go. Mini. CSS extract plugin. Okay, so I also need path because I need to do some path stuff here. This is all like the boring stuff. Um, I mean, if you've worked building webpack configs and stuff before, this is not the most exciting part of any project. But, um, you know, it is what it is. I'll just have an next. I use, I like to name my functions. You know, it, it doesn't matter. Should be env because this is the uh, environment variable to come over, and then the argument that comes over. So I got my config here. It's gonna be an empty object, and I'm gonna return that config. That's kind of how I like to do it. You don't have to, but uh, so now what am I gonna do? I need an entry point. So my entry point is gonna be um, index entry, right? I'm gonna have it be my uh, source. Like the source index.ts. There'll be a TypeScript file there in a second. Uh, so my output, I told you this is gonna be super exciting, right? You guys watch me do this. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat. That's it. <laughs> Quick copy paste cheat, right? Okay, so I've got my output. Basically, I'm just gonna say everything goes to my disk directory, which is really the default directory, but every now and then I don't know. I think I've noticed some weird um things if I don't tell webpack where everything is, even though it automatically created this folder. I don't understand, but you know, it's just me. I don't know. Uh, dev server, I want to pretty much serve everything in this directory, compress it, so it'll be gzipped. That's my port. I like to write to disk because I like to double check what's on disk. Um, that's just me. You don't have to, but I like to do it. I seem to think it makes my builds faster, but it could just be in my head. I don't know what I'm doing. So module is going to have rules. Right, and in those rules, um, we are going to test for. Do that right? Yeah, we're going to test for TypeScript files. So it's a regex that looks like forward, yeah, forward slash backslash uh, dot, and that's going to be ts. And you know, I don't think we have any here. JS files, as well as any JSX files that may come across. And that's what we're going to test for, for uh, Babel stuff. We're going to exclude node modules, right? So we are not going to uh, let it parse anything inside node modules. And the loader is going to be the Babel loader. And there we go. So that that's all you got to do. Uh, I mean, we got we have to set Babel to handle parsing the TypeScript stuff, tell it what um presets and stuff to use but as far as the webpack stuff goes that's pretty much it normally for typescript this would be the uh, ts loader or i think there's a ats loader as well uh, one of those two you could use uh, so now we're going to do our css because i gotta have some i technically don't have to have the css here when you are working with well for this project anyway because when you're working with the arcgis core you can always have it reference the css that gets copied over in the assets and Never worry about uh, writing your own here, but you know, that's not how I roll. And CSS might just be considered like a little bonus because, uh, like you said, your project, you might not need all this stuff. You might just have the CSS directly referenced in HTML. Uh, so now we have plugins. So plugins is another array. And we're going to have the um, uh, mini CSS extract plugin basically if we're using the uh, mini css extract plugin loader here then the plugin we want to be able to output whatever the css is and like i said that is not um, related at all to typescript and babel but it's just kind of a webpack thing that you're probably going to be doing so i do the 
ArcGIS plugins. I wanted to just copy my assets folders for me. I'm going to have a new HTML. Oh my God. Webpack plugin. And this one's going to have a, um, no template. And that template is going to be in source index.html and I'll make that in a second. File name is going to be, I mean, I'm not, yeah, it's just index.html, right? Okay. So then I've got some other stuff in here, which I think I need. I'm not sure if I need this resolve stuff or not. I usually find if I don't do it, then something might break and I just, I feel bad because that just means I did something wrong. So let me format this. Things are all wacky. So basically I'm telling Webpack, you know, recognize uh, TS, TSX, JS, and CSS files. And then you can trust me enough Webpack that I'm going to provide you a loader to be able to load those files. And if I don't provide a loader to load any of those files or any files that they reference, then Webpack is going to yell at me and call me a very bad developer. Let me do the index HTML first because uh, get that out of the way. Yeah, it's not the most exciting thing here. Boom. Babel TypeScript Webpack HTML file. I'm going to make an index.css as well and a index.js. And I'm going to look in uh, Esri themes dark main.css. Okay, so that's reloading that one. Then I need something for the HTML body and you know what i'm gonna go ahead and say that the view div is gonna have the same thing uh we're gonna have um padding of zero margin zero you know one of these days i'm gonna get through a video where i don't make a stupid mistake um one of these days not today apparently okay so we've got the, the CSS set up. That I means that's pretty straightforward. So now what I want to do for the JS file. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, not JS. What am I doing? This isn't a type, this is a TypeScript file. Boom. I mean, I'm so used to just making up stupid JS files. All right, so let's go ahead and import my map. So I'm import ArcGIS map from ArcGIS core map. So I, like to, I like to just name it ArcGIS map. It makes me feel nice and fuzzy inside. You know what I'm saying? So I give me a map view from ArcGIS core views map view. Uh, and let's import the CSS file. That way Webpack will pick it up and include it as part of the build. We've already set the loaders in the Webpack config to load CSS files and that should be good to go. Um, okay, so now I need to do my map. It's going to be equal to new ArcGIS map. And you can't tell yet that, I mean, I don't have any types or interfaces in here, which in hindsight, maybe it wasn't super smart. I should have done something that would have types and interfaces in here, but trust me, it's TypeScript. There's a TS file extension right there. Uh, let's make a view. So the view is going to be equal to a new map view it's a containers of view div let me do a uh center of um hope i do this right i believe this goes first that goes second it reads as lat long that long lat find out all right so my zoom will be 12. and then so i just actually use the view i do a view dot when right here and I'm going to go ahead and pass a function there. And that's going to be uh, just a console log. View is ready. Specified and include. Is it includes? Include? No. Include. Not. Yeah, I don't. Oh, there we go. Huh, now it works. I just had to touch it. Oh, there we go. Huh, now it works. I just had to. That's it. That's it. That's it. We're, we're, we're almost there, right? We've got the Webpack uh, config set up. We've got the um, packages installed that we should be using. Now we need to set something up here or create a Babel RC. I like to just do it right here in the um, package.json. 
to let Babel know what I want to do. So I'll make a little Babel property in my package JSON. Make some presets. All right, so the presets are going to be an array. Yeah. And we're going to include the um, at Babel preset env, and then just all the standard nonsense that it's going to do. Babel uh, preset TypeScript. That's also another one. Add some script tags in here, and let's see what happened. I'm just going to add a or uh, the scripts. Let's get rid of this test one here. Like a start, and this is going to be a webpack serve. Man, cross your fingers, this works. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, so, webpack and fig, we sold it to create the dev server at port 3001. You know, it's going to be a miracle if this doesn't error out the first time I do it. I told you it'd be a miracle if it didn't error out. All right, let's do this again. Give a start. Look at that. Oh. All right, so it's running at localhost 3001. Look at that, it worked. All right, nice. Bam, so there's my vector tile street maps. All right, so that's working very nice. Um, let me make a uh, build script uh, because it, obviously I'm loading an awful lot of, uh, it's a development mode, so I'm, I'm loading an awful lot of, all right. Empty cache and hard reload. 814k of job. That's still not bad. That's a lot of files, but it's not bad at all. I thought it was actually going to be worse. Let me make a build script to see what a build is going to look like. This one's going to be webpack mode equals production. Yeah, I don't need no serve. All right, so npm run build. And yeah, this might take a second. Uh, builds typically take a little longer than normal. So let me just talk real quickly about some of the stuff that we did, which isn't really that complicated, right? I mean, essentially what you're doing here is that you're telling um, Webpack that you want TypeScript to validate your app. You want to validate that all the types are being used correctly, the interface is used correctly, that you know, TypeScript is working, that you know it's doing its own thing. It takes that output, gives it to Babel, and then Babel is going to go ahead and transform your files into JavaScript once... Uh, so everything works. I don't think if you do it this way, I think you do lose any type errors ahead of time. You, um, if you just want to check if everything is type validated, and VS Code is really cool for that. VS Code will tell you if uh, automatically if some types uh, are wrong or interfaces are wrong. But I think if you just want to validate the TypeScript, you run the TSC command. That will validate the TypeScript, no, no output or anything, but will tell you when where the errors are in your typings, right? So that, that's a good way to do it. But I think if you just run it this way, the build still goes. Even if there are errors, something will happen, I believe. At least it used to. Don't uh, quote me on that. There we go. Look at that. 543K for that, this nice, simple little map, right? And considering that this is like all webgl and stuff and then uh we're loading workers to parse all the data and everything i mean come on that is not bad at all it's a really cool uh, nice clean looking map man. oh these vector tiles look at that oh what you're doing shit look at you all right so that's it i mean um again the biggest thing you got to worry about is maybe if, if you want to use some kind of um if you're using async await you're probably gonna have to uh, install the what is it regenerator runtime and maybe another um uh, Babel preset of some sort uh, in here to use that. Uh, if you do any, like, um, I think if you do classes, you have to install another uh, preset or plugin, a uh, Babel plugin for the class classes inside of JavaScript, depending on what you're uh, piling down to, and the async await and all that stuff. So it just kind of depends on what you're using, what uh, you're targeting for your browser and stuff. It'll uh, try to add some kind of helpers and quality fills for you, but you're, you're going to have to install them uh, and it'll tell you if something doesn't work and you got to go search Google and copy paste something off Stack Overflow and everything will start working. For you. I mean, if you got any more questions about stuff like this in the future, let me know. Thanks a lot. Have a good one.